So with this infrastructure bill a big step closer to reality and perhaps sensing the Senate would advance its three and a half trillion dollar spending plan last night, President Biden appeared to be very confident uh, in its plan to fundamentally transform America that it's going to actually happen. In fact, take a listen to his comments as he walked away from yesterday's press conference. I'd like to ask you about infrastructure as well. Given that you have said this is such an urgent bill that needs to be passed, why not have the House take it up immediately for a vote? <laughs> we'll get it done. I'll get both. Thank you. So uh, President Biden got that swagger back, folks. The question now is just how much will it cost America? And I'm not just talking in dollars and cents. I'm going to bring in the managing partner of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. And David, you know, uh, once again, Democratic Senator Manchin this morning <clears throat> voicing concern about this spending plan. But I got to tell you something that to me, I don't know, maybe I'm just waking up to it. It seems like he's more and more opposed to the size of the plan, not necessarily the abuse of reconciliation. Uh, so I think maybe he'll go with a smaller plan. That means ultimately this thing is going to go through. Should we just assume that there's going to be some kind of big gargantuan spending plan? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, that all of the spending that has taken place through multiple Republican and Democrat administrations has made it impossible to have another Tea Party 2 type moment. Tea Party 2.0 can't happen because there isn't the credibility there to go stop the big spending. And so what you're going to have to do is marginally pick away at it. One of the amendments that they passed in the middle of the night, they got eight Democrat senators to say that they will not ban fracking, that they will not go try to do backdoor, you know, regulations against fracking. That's the type of thing they're going to have to do to improve it. But unfortunately, I agree with you, Charles, they're going to end up getting some bill. But some bill is tough to define because it could be much smaller than three and a half trillion in the final version. So then let's uh, let's do this. I read your dividend uh, cafe report yesterday. So let's handicap some of the things on President Biden's wish list, what he wants and what you think the likely outcomes are going to be. Let's start with this corporate tax rate of 28 percent. Yeah, I believe uh, that they're going to end up at 25. And I and Joe Manchin actually made a comment on 25 percent uh, some time ago. So that's meaningfully lower than the 35 percent it was before President Trump lowered it. But it's higher than the 21. But here's the thing. It's important. There is an R&D deduction that businesses have that goes away in January. I think they're going to bring that back. And so effectively, okay. the 25 is really going to stay kind of low. Oh, that's good. We had the rest of them up uh, in, in the essence of time. I want to go to one more thing be, beyond that, because we had all of your outcomes up on the board. The student loan ex uh, payment uh, uh, exemption that's pushed into next year. It feels like this is already a de facto student loan forgiveness program, and I think it's going to morph into an official po policy. This is something, of course, the AOC wing has pushed for really hard. What's the cost of something like that? And I'm not just talking about the debt. Uh, but the true cost to, to people who are saying, you know, this is one thing you should pay for, that you've got a great education out of it. You're going to earn a lot of money. It feels like this is going to hurt the spirit of, of what we are. Oh, I think it's also going to hurt the Democratic Party politically a great deal. I have a whole chapter on this in my book I wrote about Elizabeth Warren, because this is, as you just said, it's a tax that uh, forgiving student debt primarily helps decent income earners, you know, professionals. And, and it's very discriminatory against lower income wage earners. And so not only is it totally anti-American, it's incredibly unfair to people who worked and worked to pay off the debt. But I don't think it's politically wise either. Uh, President Biden yeah. has said as much. President Biden has been opposed to it in the past. And so to try to do this backdoor now, I don't think it's going to work out well for them at all. Although we, we, they pushed it out to January of next year. We'll see. I mean, that's, uh, it sounds like they're, they're finding ways to appease everyone and still have the talking points that you just talked about. David, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Always appreciate yeah. it.